Rebecca from Chemnitz. And recently I did a video where I took a really, really old dye stock of my muck dye. This is a dye mixture that I created by mixing all 40 Jacquard acid dyes together. And then it created this beautiful blended warm toned purpley brown color. Unfortunately, the dye stock seemed to have shifted in color and there was no acid in that stock. And so I'm not really sure what did or did not happen there, but I realized I have some of this muck dye that has been mixed with citric acid for over a year, for thir about 13 months. And I'm curious if this will look similar to what I remember from speckling with this muck mixture, which breaks amazingly. Because if you think about it, combining all of the different pigments in Jacquard's line all together, then you have tons of pigments that strike at different rates and you get all these different colors in the speckles. So anyway, today we're gonna speckle with this mixture and see if, I, if it feels similar to what I remember from the past. Before we go talk about the yarn, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Anne from Kansas. Anne, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and I really hope you're going to enjoy this video. And if you at home would like to learn more about how you could become a lab partner or last minute lab partner, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And while you're at it, subscribe! Today we are going to dye Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and I've had it pre-soaking in just some plain tap water for a couple of minutes. Since we're speckling, I don't need the yarn to be perfectly saturated, and Stroll is a yarn base that soaks up water really, really quickly. So. Even after a couple minutes soak, it shouldn't have dry patches. But in general, I do try to pre-soak yarn for at least 30 minutes. In my four inch deep full size catering steam pan, I added 300 grams of yarn. I squeezed out most of the pre-soak water, but there was still some liquid left. And I just added five cups of water that had three tablespoons of white vinegar mixed in. Our dyes today do have citric acid mixed with the dye powder. I don't really remember the exact ratio that we had there, but I figured that we wanted some acid in here to help things sort of soak well. So uh, there is some water in here, not a lot around the edges. We'll keep an eye on that, but I'm gonna start heating this up. We are on two gas burners on my stovetop, and once things start to get nice and steamy, then we'll come and start dyeing the yarn. And we'll keep an eye on the edges. I do have some water with a turkey baster just off camera that we can add more of if we think we need it. Yeah, I'm gonna add some more water now. I mean, sometimes I try to think about things not just by uh, the total number of cups or grams, and I just look to see, do I see a little water at the edges? Because we certainly do not want anything to burn. Uh, and just add a little more water, and I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. You can see we've got some steam coming up there. And we wanna try to help the heat be a little more even, so I'm gonna move the yarn, but as long as things are nice and wet, I have not yet squirched any yarn. Uh, it could happen, <laughs> but I have not done it yet. Since we're using dry dye powder, I'm wearing a deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves. And therefore my voice will be more muffled. I'm gonna reduce the heat to the lowest setting. And we have a lot of dye here. Uh, even if I go heavy, which I probably will, there is a lot of pigment in here. And so I am just sprinkling it on fairly lightly, but you can see it pretty well. And by lightly, okay, these are heavy speckles, but I'm trying to spread out the dye versus allowing it in like big clump patches, if that makes sense. Now I have dyed with a lot of leftover dyes mixed with citric acid in the past. That is not something that is uncommon, uh, but, I think what is unique about this for me here today is that this leftover dye was labeled with a date. So I know exactly how long it was mixed together. And so therefore, if things feel very different from what I remember, uh, then, then we'll know that. But so far, 
I think things are looking almost as I would expect. I'm going to add a little bit more and then we'll zoom in. I'm covering the container when it's not in use and immediately in here we can see a very warm tone red, we see pink, we see uh, some yellow and blue in addition with a more nondescript grayish color and this seems very very familiar to me. Uh, looking in at the pan I do see some things that feel a little bit more green, I see some orange in places because there are a lot of different dye molecules that are used to create a premixed dye. Uh, there are some primaries, but not every color, like there's not like a green dye for every shade. A lot of greens and purples end up being mixes, uh, but there are some more like orange and red and yellow kind of colors, I think, that are more legitimate primaries. But this is feeling like what I remember. I'm going to raise the heat back up to medium low and gonna, I'm going to let this sit for at least five minutes before we flip. It's hard to say from a white balance perspective if the main color here is feeling cooler in tone than it did a few years ago when I mixed this dye. But I will say that uh, these speckles look very, very similar to the citric acid speckles that I dyed back for 2021's Hanukkah. Oh, I'm seeing some like orangey yellow tones, lots and lots of colors coming in. And one of the reasons why we see so many different hues in here is that when the dye coats and sort of sticks to the citric acid, some of the colors, because it's a big mixture, may not be on each individual fleck. And so that allows us to see more of this breaking. That you get breaking like this when you use mixtures um, in general, but I haven't exactly mixed a dye powder to break intentionally like this. This was just a very happy result from that muck mixture. We have a lot of sharp and fine speckles here, but there are spots where some of the colors have spread out in a wider sort of pattern. Um, but now I'm gonna flip the yarn and we're gonna start dyeing the rest. I'm gonna try to make sure as we're dyeing the yarn that we try to get pretty heavy coverage. It might be heavier than I did for Hanukkah, but I'm curious what that will look like. It doesn't feel to me that storing the dye powder with citric acid really affected the way that the color overall looks. And if you think about it, there are dye brands like Country Classic where their acid dyes are mixed with citric acid dye powder already before sending them out. And so that's a situation where I don't think that it should affect the shelf life or anything like that. But there is one tiny other thing that I do want to say as a reminder pH is a reflection of a concentration of your acid in water. And so there isn't really a pH that you could use to describe a dyed powder. There are numbers and things that reflect how acidic or basic uh, compounds are. I'm not gonna get into pKa's and things like that, but having the, the powder there uh, isn't something that would necessarily affect stability of a dye molecule in a way that maybe it would if we had citric acid and the dye mixed in solution for a longer period of time. Uh, that I don't know. I don't know a lot about the chemistry of the dyes, individual dyes themselves. I tried to wait at least five minutes before flipping the yarn to continue to get coverage of this dye all over. I knew that I wasn't going to finish this dye. There's a lot of it here. And actually, I have another idea of something that we can do with it that when I finish this up, we'll, we'll get into that. I just added on a bunch of water and oh, it's so pretty and subtle. Uh, I absolutely love this. Just look at all the different colors. It's so, so fun. I'm now gonna heat this for 30 minutes and then we'll remove the yarn, let it cool completely so we can wash it. Since I just filmed this other video where I looked at a really old dye stock and I compared it to the original muck dye, why don't we measure out some of this dye powder and see what the tone looks like if I dissolve it and then kettle dye some yarn in it? Now, if I measure out one gram of the dye powder that I've mixed with citric acid, that's not gonna be nearly as pigmented as 
one gram of the original muck dye would be because there's citric acid mixed in. But we should be able to see if this leans more greenish or if it leans more purple brownish or if we end up with a, something that feels completely different altogether. I ended up measuring out two grams of the powder and I'm glad I did because I don't think there's that much pigment in the two grams of this mixture. All right, this is already warm in tone, like what we saw with the straight powder. Um, not that pigmented. I have just added the dye into 16 cups of water. I've not added acid yet, except for the citric acid that was mixed in with the dye, which may have been a fair amount of citric acid. So I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar into the pot. And things are still pretty cold in here. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be a pastel, isn't it? Um, or a medium toned, but I'm gonna add the yarn. And immediately, it's looking like a warm tone color, a warm tone pink. This is a lot more like what I remembered <laughs> from mixing the dyes originally versus the effects that we saw when we had our dye stock for a long period of time. And so this honestly is giving a more definitive answer than the speckling, uh, but I'm glad that we did both anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this heat for 30 minutes, turn off the heat, let it cool down for a bit, set it aside so it cools completely, and then we can wash the yarn. Let's wash our speckly yarn. Oh my gosh, I love all the colors. Oh. It is so, so fun, especially the way that some of them show up a little later on. And let's also wash what the actual color looks like. This is a very rosy, purpley. It's feeling more brown to me than the first time when I was really insisting that it was more of a purple. But I did do a swatch test and the muck color is definitely more purple than the browns, less purple than the purples. So uh, that's, that's what it is, but I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding. Certainly there are colors in here like turquoise and hot fuchsia that are more bleeders, but those mixtures make up 1 40th of the entire mix. Um, I'm now gonna add some clear dish soap and we'll fill this back up. And let's see, I mean, I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding. Um, but anyway, here's a little bit of what the color looks like at a 1% uh, depth of shade. It's very, it's much more cool toned when it's more saturated. Uh, and I'm definitely feeling more brown than purple here today. But I figured it was worth showing what the color looks like more saturated. But anyway, I am gonna finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm gonna put all the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. It amazes me every single time that this multicolored confection of speckles comes from one dye mixture. Now granted, this mixture is a combination of 40 different pre-mixed colors, so who knows how many pigments there are at play, but I adore the way that this speckles, and this yarn here looks exactly like the yarn that I remember. So I really don't think that having this muck mixture combined with citric acid for a long period of time affected the actual color that we have of that dye. Unlike when we left it in solution for a long period of time and it turned this green color. I still don't really understand what that's about. But I do have a whole other video where I dove into that. I don't remember how many grams of our muck mixture we dissolved to create this tonal, but this color is much more in line with the straight muck powder that's still in dry powder form and has nothing to do with that green. Again, I have still have no idea what happened besides something degrading. I mean, some and multiple pigments just must not have behaved well when in water for this long period of time. We know that fiber reactive dyes degrade in water over periods of time because the part of the molecule that will react with the fibers does react with water. And so that's why you want to use them quickly after being mixed. But yeah, I mean, this is still mind boggling to me. The neutral is feeling more brown to me than it's ever felt before, maybe because I'm comparing it to those other greens. It does feel very sort of pink purple, kind of brownish leaning way. I wouldn't call it like a perfect tan or anything like that, but 
this color as a neutral complements these speckles so well. Oh my gosh, I'm such a sucker for this. I mean, I know I created this blend myself, that this is something that I made, but I don't think I could look at a collection of colors and mix them to do this effect specifically because there are a lot of deep pigments in there that probably stick to each other a bit to give those more black specks. And we're not seeing a multicolored speck of every single color that could have combined. So there's something to that there, but it doesn't matter because this is glorious. I suppose now, and I'm hesitating a little bit before I say this, but do we need to make a mixture of all of the Dharma acid dyes? At the time I filmed the original mixing video, there were 40 Jacquard acid dyes. That's why I went there. Dharma has a much wider collection and there are more colors that are now discontinued and a few that maybe I don't have uh, that people love and swear by, but that is something that I could do. So if that is something that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. Anne in Kansas, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you are gonna enjoy your yarn. I mean, look at these speckles. Oh my gosh. And thank you again for being my lab partner. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Not because we looked and saw that Having your dyes powdered mixed in with citric acid doesn't seem to cause any problems, but also because we revisited these fabulous muck speckles and it's been a while and so I'm excited. I do have a reasonable amount of the powder left and while the neutral color that we get with this is very unique and I don't have another dye that does anything like it, I think it's true beauty is in this speckling power. And so I think, ooh, I mean, part of me wants to leave in really heavy and do like a mega heavy speckled version with it. Like more heavy speckled than this. Put it in a shaker and really go to town. But the rest of me like doesn't want to l lose or waste, not waste. I mean, it was hard to make and I'll never make it the exact same way again. And so, yeah, it just means that I don't use it as often because I want to save it for something special. So do you have any ideas of what I should do with this muck mixture? Please let me know down in the comments below. I really wish that YouTube would still let me put polls in iCards, like the card at the top corner of the screen. That was something that they used to allow people to do and now we can't. I can do polls on my community page though. Uh, so. I mean, I'd be tempted to do that, but maybe that would make this informal poll way more official <laughs> than I'm attending at the moment. So we'll see what you request, and depending on the number of requests, things will get bumped up the uh, video ideas list. Thank you so much for watching. Have you pre-ordered the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler yet? Go and check out my Etsy shop because pre-orders are open now for these really fun samplers that have 100 grams of yarn in either fingering or DK weight. And you'll have a mini skein from each of the eight nights of Hanukkah where you'll get to watch me dye the yarn in a new video. Plus there are a lot of fun extras and other little surprises that I have in there. Uh, you can learn more through the link in the video description, or you can head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop to learn more.